Manual handling then, my favorite. This is one of our most popular free courses at safety.com and there is good reason for it. If we take a look at the typical non-fatal accident stats for Great Britain again, you can see that handling, lifting or carrying is responsible for a massive 20% or almost 20% of injuries. Not quite as prolific as slips and trips, but it's absolutely a substantial proportion of the overall workplace related injuries. And so it's understandable that training is high on the agenda when it comes to manual handling for a lot of companies before they'll even let people work uh, for them. But let's look a little further into what we're talking about here and the types of strategies that we would use to reduce risk in this area. Manual handling crops up on risk assessments more often than not. And as you can see on our index here, we have some basic guidelines that we would typically use to get started. Once we have that starting template, we would then make it more specific to the particular job, task or site from there. We start by mentioning training and that includes some introductory theory that would be included in the likes of our online course. But we would also recommend always to anyone who cares to ask, you should really implement some form of in-person demonstration that is specific to your site or operation, just to check that those involved have understood the basic concepts and themes of good lifting and safe lifting, and that there's agreement on the correct way to lift the items that are specific to your environment. For more unique or complex operations, you may also want to consider doing a task-based manual handling risk assessment. And the UK HSE has some really useful resources on this, on this subject. And although the assessment task can be quite laborious or time consuming in itself, it may well be well worth it, depending on the risk profile of the work you're doing. It's worth noting as well that manual handling tasks have been broken down into different types when it comes to doing specific risk assessments on them. And these are typically First of all, pushing and pulling. Secondly, lifting and carrying. And thirdly, repetitive movements. We also have some really useful templates over at safety.com that we've created for some of these different assessments based on the HSC's guidance. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested in checking them out. When we do perform a specific assessment on a manual handling task, it really forces us to engage with the people and the process, allowing us to see exactly where the problems are and the risks where they exist. In doing so, it makes it much easier to prioritize then our time and our resources to try and reduce the most significant of those risks. And on implementing controls, we might be looking at things like purchasing mechanical equipment to assist with lifting, you can see in the risk assessment index here, we've mentioned using mechanical means for awkward or heavy loads, or just making sure that an extra person is available for heavier lifts, if there's no other option than to manually lift the object. Another point I would highlight here is making sure that the importance of reporting pain or discomfort from manual handling or repetitive processes is something that's communicated well to your workforce. And something else to keep a keen eye on from my own experience is to consider how any control measure that you might use affects the speed of the production process. In other words, ask yourself, does the change that you make, for example, using a lifting aid like a pallet truck, does it significantly slow down the operation? If this is the case, just be aware that people will seek the path of least resistance. And if there is an easier way to do things, particularly if that's faster, they will be tempted to do it. Okay, that's it for manual handling. It is a broad subject, of course. And to give you an extra helping hand, we'll leave some links uh, to our free course that I mentioned earlier, and some of those templates for the more in-depth risk assessments that I discussed, and we'll leave those in the description.